Yes, that is me, Vivian Vance, also known as Ethel. Thank you. I could never get away from Ethel as long as hard as I tried. Well, you surely remember my husband, Mr. Tutwad himself, don't you? <laughs> yes, Fred. You can't forget Fred. Well, we were the neighbors of Lucy and Ricky Ricardo on a little tiny television show called I Love Lucy. Uh, I remember, however, many years ago, looking at that picture, how I was launched from this stage from the Kimo Theater, and I'll tell you what, those were humble beginnings for me. But if it hadn't been for the Albuquerque Little Theater under Catherine Kennedy O'Connor, and of course this beautiful theater, I don't think I would have had the career that I had. But it was a wonderful career, and I went all the way to New York from this stage, and then of course later on, yes. I have ALT to thank for that, and they're still going strong over there, aren't they? Beautiful show. Yes. Henry Avery is now the director of that theater. Fabulous shows, even today. I loved coming back again and again, performing here. I even created the balcony for the Albuquerque Little Theater back in 1966 or 7. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Well, my friends, I'll tell you what. You know, I loved New Mexico so much as a teenager, so much, that I wanted to come back again and again and again. I love the culture here. I love the beauty here. I love the people here. And I know some of my friends and maybe some of my family are out there today. Are any of my family members out there today? Some of my nieces and nephews? Yes? Oh, good. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, my, my brother and sisters grew up here in Albuquerque and all their nieces, all their children, which are my nieces and nephews, became my children. And I love you. <laughs> well, there I am, loving everything about New Mexico. And of course, I had to have a house in Albuquerque, up in Santa Fe, and then clear over west by Cuba, a little, actually it was called Cubero. <laughs> and it was a little tiny house, and uh, we had lots of land out there, and we raised lots and lots of Ouch. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but as you can see, I am delighted to be your hostess this afternoon. And we are truly going to have a wonderful time right here at this historic chemo theater. Well, my friends, when I look back and I think about the beautiful pueblos that I used to visit, I loved their dances. I loved their pottery and their rugs and, of course, Indian jewelry. Where would we be without that beautiful turquoise jewelry? Love it, love it, love it. And all my homes all around the country were filled with those artifacts to remind me of this beautiful land. And uh, I think about it today, I think, oh, how can it be those, those wonderful Native Americans going back centuries and creating all of those beautiful things, but most importantly, creating their own traditions in dance and in music and you know their songs and their traditional dances and music have they've influenced us, but they've influenced their pueblos and their tribes for a very long, long time. That is why I want you now to gather around me and I want you to celebrate these wonderful stories told in song and dance form with the beautiful Shelley Morning song and her wonderful partner, Fabian Fontanelle. Give them a round of applause.
California at the Indian School in Riverside in 1917. And little did she know she could sing, that, was, that she was going to become a singer, a soloist. And the school teacher, music teacher, asked her to come into the classroom one day and asked her to sing a song, to a song that he played on a, um, a Vitrola. <laughs> and, um, they say she only heard it one time and she sang it to a T. And so she made many wonderful, beautiful songs composed with the help of her grandfather, our great-great-grandfather, whose name was Tsa in Zuni. Young man, his name was Young Man. And she went on way beyond the boundaries of her homeland here in New Mexico, away from the village. And she was part of many, many wonderful experiences and the things she did throughout her life. Just to name a few, 1922, she was asked to be part of the grand opening for the Hollywood Bowl in California. The unveiling of the Santa Fe Super Chief train engine in 1934, Manhattan, New York City, and so many wonderful things. The song we're gonna share with you is one of her compositions with the help of her grandfather. It sings about the thunder, the lightning, and the rain. Oh, namaho ashwan. Oh, yeah. And they're singing to the little ones, they're singing to the babies. Grandfather Lightning is coming. 
Grandfather rain is coming. Grandfather thunder is coming. Don't be afraid. Don't cry.
But um, when I was relaxing after a show or whatever, whether it was in New York or a tour of the country or in Hollywood, I would get in my Buick and I would drive all over the country. Love to drive, love to drive. It clears your head. And I would memorize scripts that way. And uh, But especially here in New Mexico. And you know it's a little isolated out there, don't you? It's a little <laughs> so of course your imagination takes over. And uh, I used to think about those early Spanish explorers coming up from Mexico City and Chihuahua all the way up the Camino Real, up the River Valley, all the way through Albuquerque, landing up there in Santa Fe, many of them. And I would think how courageous they were coming to this isolated part of the world. But of course, they were coming for um, the King of Spain, so that made a difference, you know, and some of them got land grants. But they did come up this way, and those caravans had livestock, and horses, and mules, and donkeys, and, and they could only go as fast as the slowest member of the caravan, and that would be the pig. The pig walked very slowly, so they couldn't, they couldn't go any faster than the pigs. So that gives you an idea of how long it took them to get up here. At any rate. They loved being up here, and of course, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. And once I was in Old Town, at the gazebo there, watching some Spanish dancers. I'll, I'll never forget. They were so beautiful that I said, oh my goodness, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to become Spanish too. So I bought an antique. Yes, I know it's a little hard to believe, but... <laughs> I bought a mantilla and a veil, and I thought I looked so Spanish, you know. The little children at the show this morning, I said, do I look Spanish to you? And a round of applause said, no. <laughs> so I guess that answers it. But at any rate, there they were with their feet sounding like rhythms, you know, like, a, like drums. And then their hands had those beautiful castanets. I love castanets. I wish I could play them. And the castanets sounding like an entire orchestra. And I was so enthralled that I would remember them every time I would play a Spanish senora or a senorita on I Love Lucy. I would go back to those days. So right now, I want you to enjoy the next act, the performers. They're so fabulous, and they're so Spanish.
imagine. We were a part of Spain because Spain dominated us until the year of 1821, and that's when the Republic of Mexico came in. And by golly, things started to change very nicely. And uh, the Republic of Mexico went hand in hand with 1821, the Santa Fe Trail, and those gringos coming in. <laughs> you can't get away from them, fellas and ladies. I'm telling you, you can't get away from them. <laughs> they came in in 1821, and that trail was from Independence, Missouri, all the way to Santa Fe, New Mexico, the oldest capital in the United States, despite what they say in Florida <laughs> at St. Augustine. I don't care. I still say it's Santa Fe. And of course, with all of this excitement happening, you know, the, the Mexicans, oh my goodness, when I would hear Ricky Ricardo play Babaloo on his on the drum, that would take me back to the beautiful songs he would sing from Spain and Mexico. And, and that's what the, this 25 short year period did for us, because the Mexican era was only 25 years, you see, only 25 years, but they're still here, you know. <laughs> they're still here, but that era of the Republic was only 25 years, and uh, of course, Today we still celebrate, not with conga drums in New Mexico, but with guitars and, and violins and uh, mariachis and oh, we have something special. We have something different today. You there? <laughs> you are. Mike and I, oh my gosh, Mike's behind me with the marimba. And you know how popular it is in Chiapas, Mexico? It's so popular that they created the song called Las Chapanecas. Valemos la dance, you see. Las Chapanecas, you see. So now, with Mike and Aya and the beautiful Mexican dancers coming out here, let's celebrate the Republic of Mexico. <laughs> Woo! -hoo!
my cheeks say, pain. I'm a cowboy who never saw a cow, never broke a steer, cause I just don't know how. And I ain't fixin' to do it now. Yippee yo guy yay. Yippee yo guy yay. Yippee yo guy yay. Yippee yo guy yay.
drags a coffee drum with him everywhere he goes. Right? And he's very mean. And he's been trying to explain it ever since. I am looking for... Maybe she is right. I'll go to work with Yana. But I've got a thing to 
ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep Sal on the sax. Okay, and he's going to do something that you're going to love. It's going to blow you away. So here we go. Bounce. Ready, Sal? Ready. Next on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, is something I wrote years ago. Some entitled Cruise in Central because we all did it, right? We, when we, we cruised Central before. Nah, because I cruised it last night. It's not the same thing. So, so here we go. All right.
Central Boulevard Con mi familia Yo y mi primo en España Somos familia Oh,
You are fantastic. And Ethel, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to do your bows for you today. You know, she's off to Old Town, probably buying some more Indian jewelry. She's starting to look like a walking curio shop, you know, but um, that's our Ethel. And I'll tell you what, I love Ethel's hometown. You Albuquerqueans really do it up right, don't you? Without one lady standing on this stage, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about that lady right there. Where are you? There she is. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you what the motivation was behind this show, and I was so fortunate enough to get the city of Albuquerque, along with my production company, the Auto Productions, to support this endeavor because our history is so varied and so rich. We're unique to the rest of the Southwest. Even though there's a lot of commonality, some common threads is just a thread. Ladies and gentlemen, we are New Mexico. We are. And you know what, there's three people I'd like to recognize. First, I, have, I think I have two dancers in the audience. I hope they made it today, former dancers. They were the original members of Ballet in Fuego. Diane. Is she here, Diane? Can we have house lights on? Is it possible? Turn on some house lights. Is Diane De Leon here? Or is she up there? Well, she's gonna be. But now she's a very accomplished drummer. So where she used to have, you know, uh, maintain rhythm with her feet, now she does it with her hands and her feet. Okay, because she's very, very accomplished. And also there's Leslie. And Leslie's here. Leslie's here. Stand up. on the stage. We have, we have Tina Nunez there at the end. Her son, her son, her son down there is dancing with her. And this is her granddaughter. This is her granddaughter. So, you know, our culture is alive and well. Is alive and well. But ladies and gentlemen, a very special shout out. Okay? And now I come to tears. My mother. Woohoo! My father sitting at the piano, going to my dance classes, and listening to our music, coming home and playing it, and, and changing the beat, the rhythm, okay, the tempo, to teach us to listen, okay, when we're dancing, and my mom sewing the castanets and always saying, Mika, you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. New Mexico was all about. God bless you, 
And I hope we see you again next year. Thank you for coming.